This is Capital View. Good Sunday morning to you. Welcome into Capital View. I'm Jay Burr. COVID-19 has seen its ebbs and flows throughout the state. Governor Hutchinson even calling the situation five different pandemics at once. We've seen the northwestern part of the state flare up, but now new concern for health officials on the eastern side. State Representative Monty Hodges joins me now to give his perspective on COVID-19 in that part of the state. And boss, uh, we, we hope uh, you're doing well uh, at the very least, because uh, I know some of your, uh, your colleagues have, have come down with this virus. How you been up there? Oh, uh, we're doing we're doing fine up here. You know, it, the numbers are going up, but uh, uh, we're hoping to to, to get a, get a grip on it. But uh, so far, so good. I, my family and I have been uh, safe. Thank you. We've we've all been tested. And we've uh, we've been doing good. Well, that's good Thanks to hear. Absolutely, that's good to hear. Uh, you know, we don't like any of our guests here to be coming down with this thing. Um, just to, I guess, kind of. What's been your take on here? Because, like I said there in the in the introduction, there, you know, we've seen this thing flare up in the northwest part of the state, and some of that was was kind of explained. You know, you had the the, the poultry plants and the, the Marshallese, just kind of their their typical living arrangement. But what are we seeing over there in in sort of District 55 and kind of that uh, surrounding area? You know, uh, like I said earlier, the numbers are. Uh, you know, I, I try to keep up with the reports every day, and at one point, you would never see. And I cover Mississippi County. I cover most of Mississippi County, and uh, we were never on the list. You know, you have to be uh, have 20 active cases or more to for them to report on the list. And so, uh, for the past three weeks, Mississippi County has been on that list uh, with 20 more cases. So it's, and I think it's more so behaviors uh, here in this area. People are not social distancing, not wearing the mask. I was in Walmart several weeks ago, and I was the only person other than the employee that had a mask on. And so I think it's just behaviors in this neck of the wood that uh, that that is called in this uh, increase in cases uh, to go up. And I also think that the fact that you know testing took place late uh, in this area as well. And so I I I, I kind of figured that we would see. Uh, that Mississippi County would see an increase in numbers uh, a little bit later than uh, the other uh, counties or the other areas because we started testing really late. Uh, but behaviors are really a big factor. Um, we had a big event, uh, and a big event a, a week or so ago. A lot of people out uh, attended, and so uh, and you know, looking at the pictures on social media, I didn't see very many masks on. Uh, so I think. It's behaviors, one of our biggest problems. Yeah, and I know that's something that, that Governor Hutchinson has, has harped on a little bit when it comes to how effective is, is the mask order going to be. And he, he always kind of mentions with that caveat of, well, as long as people are going along with the order to a certain degree. Um, I, I guess what are you trying to do personally as one of the elected officials up in that neck of the woods to, to, to really kind of stress that message that, hey, you, you got to do something? Um. <laughs> Excuse me. One of my coworkers just, uh, you know, I, I, I'm keeping people informed. Um, it's in my truck, in the front seat of my truck. Um, keeping people, keep it, keeping it out there in front of people and stressing the importance of uh, wearing your mask and social distancing. You know, is what I'm doing. I mean, I do it on a daily basis, and 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 and, and I emphasize that and people are sharing that message along with what I'm saying too to get the word out that people need to take this very serious. Um, and that's been my biggest uh, thing uh, with 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 this COVID is to is to educate people on how important it is. Uh, I, was, I just saw where Europe is has flattened out because of the fact they practice social distance. They wear they they, they were made to wear those masks, and uh, you know. And, and it shows that it works when you when you comply with those uh, guidelines. It, we're seeing too Western Tennessee, particularly Shelby County, there really start to flare up as well. Uh, are, are you seeing any residual effect from that? Because I, I know there's a, a little bit of crossover, kind of in that neck of the woods, when it comes to you know shopping, eating, uh, all that stuff, going to Memphis. Uh, I, have you noticed any of that? I don't. I have not. You know, I'm not. I, not, I actually talked to uh, uh, contacted. A physician, one of uh, one of our physician who has a clinic that sees COVID. Uh, you know, she her, her clinic is specifically for COVID patients right now. Uh, one one of the one of the uh, uh, spots that you go to get tested. And I asked her that question. I said, you know, you think by being so close proximity to Tennessee, um, 
is, you know, is that going to is that causing a spike in these numbers? And she said, no, um, that, that she didn't think that had anything to do with it. She 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 went back to the behaviors. It's one of her biggest issues that she sees that we have in this area. And I guess uh, for you guys over there, obviously uh, there's there's a lot more rural. Uh, there's poorer parts of the state over there on the in the eastern, just that whole side of the state here. Uh, when when it comes to schools, uh, what are you seeing? How are how are schools? <laughs> I see you popping up there. Uh, how uh, how are you trying to help get those folks prepared for these things? Because I know there's there's some different, you know, just challenges when it comes to to broadband things like that over in that part of the state as well. Uh, so, I mean, you know, uh, we've been very fortunate here that uh, uh, Internet a access has, is, 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 is not, not as bad as is some of the smaller pockets of the state. Rural broadband is, is, is a big issue. Uh, and, you know, I, I went to D.C. three years ago to lobby for funding for, for that because even before this pandemic uh, even hit because I knew that, you know, uh, having access to broadband keeps you uh, in front of the, the eight ball, you know, when, you know, these larger uh, cities that have it, you know, we don't want to be a state to fall behind when it comes to educating. We know with these Chromebooks and things of that nature, these kids are going to need. So right now, you know, uh, in, in this neck of the woods, as far as internet access and all of that, I think we're going to be fine. You know, I think, the, the, the thing is just inform you know getting these having these parents feel comfortable you know uh you know i have 11 year old so we my wife and i you know for two or three weeks you know going back and forth are we going to send him back uh to school or are we going to do virtual how are we going to handle this with you know and so we've got a village together that that that, that that's going to work together to to uh, uh decide if we're going to do the virtual thing or we're going to, you know, uh, they're going to be in, in class. So just trying to ease uh, parents' concerns. You know, I don't want to put my, my thoughts and my opinion upon them because, you know, and, 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 and have them uh, fearful. But, you know, uh, you know I, I, I don't know if it's best for these kids to uh, be in class right now. Uh, uh, you know, I would like to see a trial period for a month. Um, and see uh, how it goes, but the, you know, it's just that's just a that's just thoughts going around in my head. But uh, you know, because you know, it, 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 it's in, it's inevitable that one of these kids is gonna these you know kids are gonna they're gonna they're gonna get the virus, and and, and it's, they're gonna bring it to school, and, and I mean that's just the reality. Um, and uh, but just trying to ease parents' concerns, and and uh, and I know that. You know, I've sp spoken to superintendents and, and school officials, and they're doing everything. You know, I just pray for our teachers and our and our and our faculty and all that. But they, they're they're putting every measure in place to 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 make sure these kids are protected this coming up school season. All right, from District 55, State Representative Monty Hodges, boss. We we certainly appreciate the time and the insight. Take care out there. And coming up after the break, we take a look at why the 2020 census could be ending early. That's coming up next here on Capitol View. For the past three years, we have been your neighborhood bar and grill. The staff you know is still here to serve you. Our award-winning cuisine is returning with exciting new dishes. Our mixologists have crafted new signature cocktails. The patio is set up for your family and friends. The garage doors are open on the sidewalk cafe. Let us pour you a peachy key. We're excited to welcome you back. Right now, you're probably not thinking about your fireplace. It's hot outside, but at A1 Chimney Pro, we know in a month or two when it cools down, you'll need it in good working order. So don't wait. Make sure it's clean and safe for your family right now. Get it done before your neighbors all pick up the phone. Be the first one to have your chimney inspected, cleaned, and repaired if needed by our certified professionals. So it'll be ready when you are. Don't play with fire. Call today or check us out on the web at a1chimneypro.com. My name is John and I'm a retired veteran. Years ago, I suffered a back injury that left me partially paralyzed. Emergency surgery fixed that, but it didn't stop the pain. I needed help in Arkansas, spine and pain was there. They treated me like a person, not just a patient. I needed actual relief and they knew it. I remember waking up one day not in pain. It was the first time in years. I couldn't remember the last time I didn't hurt. So I just laid in bed for a few more minutes and soaked it all in. Arkansas Spine and Pain, they helped me get my life back ASAP. Tuesday, AGT is going live. 
The Got Talent Quarterfinals. What just happened was extraordinary. Live Tuesday on NBC. Tuesday, the two-night World of Dance finale event begins with the last of the semifinals. It takes that kind of heart. Then on Wednesday, the stunning world finale. To be named best in the world is what everybody dreams of. The World of Dance two-night finale event, Tuesday and Wednesday on NBC. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. New York Attorney General Letitia James says she's moving to dissolve the National Rifle Association. She claims the group's leaders spent cash reserves on personal items and violated tax laws by falsely claiming nonprofit status. She says NRA executives funneled millions of dollars into their own pockets and paid off family, friends, and favored vendors. The group, which has 5 million members and calls itself a charity, lost more than $63 million in three years. Has been failing to carry out its stated mission for many, many years, and instead has operated as a breeding ground for greed, abuse, and brazen illegality. NRA President Carolyn Meadows called the lawsuit a baseless, premeditated attack on the group and said the announcement and filing are politically motivated. Governor Asa Hutchinson gave his thoughts on the matter on Twitter. He writes The NRA has been a constant advocate for Second Amendment rights. If New York does not want the NRA, then the NRA should move south where people respect and value the Second Amendment. Arkansas would be a natural home. Canada says it will hit back against U.S. tariffs on Canadian aluminum with $3.6 billion in tariffs of their own. The Deputy Prime Minister of Canada says the tariffs, which match dollar for dollar the cost of the planned 10% import tariff on Canadian raw aluminum. President Trump accuses Canada of breaking a promise not to flood the U.S. market with aluminum, an accusation Canada denies. In imposing these tariffs, the United States has taken the absurd decision to harm its own people at a time when its economy is suffering the deepest crisis since the Great Depression. Any American who buys a can of beer or of soda or a car or a bike will suffer. The Deputy Prime Minister says the Canadian government will target a list of U.S. products containing aluminum to inflict the least damage on Canada while having the strongest possible impact on the United States. Millions of Americans may not be counted in this year's census. The U.S. Census Bureau announced they are ending all counting efforts for the 2020 census on September 30th, a month earlier than previously announced. According to the Census Bureau, right now only 63% of Americans have responded in the census. In Texas, that number drops to 58%. Officials in states like Texas fear that the move to end the census early could lead to a severe undercount, resulting in states losing a congressional seat and some cities not receiving the amount of federal dollars they need to function. $1.5 trillion in federal funding is allocated annually based on census data. And states that fail to deliver accurate, full, inclusive counts will lose resources. Anybody who relies on these data is already making plans to, to consider alternative strategies. So take the census, Arkansas. In a statement, the U.S. Census Bureau said it's working to speed up the count to ensure a, quote, complete and accurate 2020 census. Governor Asa Hutchinson announced that he is recommending $20 million in CARES Act funding be allocated for two weeks of paid leave for teachers and staff who may need to quarantine due to COVID-19. That would be available to teachers, admin, bus drivers, and cafeteria workers. This is in addition to the leave they currently have. The committee will vote on this next week. The governor also announced he's signing an executive order that will make any concerns over COVID a reason to obtain an absentee ballot. That it will allow the county clerks uh, to prepare the ballots uh, in advance uh, uh, for counting them beginning on election day at 8.30 a.m., which is the current law. But currently, uh, they have a week before uh, that they can uh, prepare the absentee ballots without opening up the envelope but still get it prepared so that on election day it is quicker to count. The governor emphasized the ballots may not be opened until election day as you heard there which is the law. Election day is now less than three months away and the Trump campaign is now calling to have an earlier debate. They say they want early voters receiving their ballots on their mail to see each candidate on the stage first. Last night the request had been denied. 
D.C.'s Raquel Martin reports on the nonpartisan commission in charge, says a last-minute schedule change is unnecessary. Seems like a common sense thing. The Trump campaign is vying to move up the highly anticipated presidential debate. I think the voters should uh, be able to see the two guys standing side by side on stage before they actually begin to vote. Tim Murtaugh with the Trump campaign says that means the first debate should come in early September. More than half of the votes that will be cast in this election will be cast well before Election Day. And we know millions of Americans will already have ballots. But the nonpartisan Commission on Presidential Debates, which runs the events, has denied the request. They say in 2016, less than 1% of voters cast their ballots before the first debate. There's no need to do uh, anymore. Missouri Democratic Congressman Emanuel Cleaver, an early supporter of the former vice president, says the Trump campaign knows it's trailing in the polls and is just desperate to attack. He wants enough debates so he can uh, be sufficiently nasty. Cleaver says the president is also trying to delegitimize the election. I, I think he wants to have Americans believing that you know, that they can't trust this system. But the Trump campaign says they aren't ready to give up. Putting the ball back in Joe Biden's court. Murtaugh says the campaign will keep applying public pressure for an earlier showdown between the candidates. Joe Biden has said no. Uh, he has decided that it's in his best interest to stay hidden in his basement. Without a change, the first of three debates will happen on September 29th. In Washington, Raquel Martin. The United States is facing an unprecedented challenge amidst an unprecedented crisis. Reopening schools during a global pandemic that is showing few signs of slowing down. It's a daunting task with no clear consensus among experts. Many schools lack the staffing, supplies, and resources to ensure a safe environment for students and teachers. So in order to prevent the virus from spreading further, 14 of the 20 largest school districts in the country have already said that they will be starting the fall with remote learning. But what about the 15% of U.S. households without a high-speed Internet connection? How about the 30 million children who get free and reduced lunch at school? Not to mention the psychological and developmental effects of kids missing in-person school for so long. This Sunday, we'll be kicking off Coronavirus and the Classroom, NBC's week-long look at the challenges and compromises that are going to have to be made when it comes to reopening schools with a conversation with educators from across the nation. It all begins this Sunday on Meet the Press. I can't wait for that. When we come back, we have more look at your top political headlines. You're watching Capitol View on Sunday morning. Hi, I'm Missy Gibson. At John Gibson Auto Sales, we offer our customers the opportunity to buy almost any vehicle. We have over 900 cars, trucks, SUVs, motorcycles, ATVs, campers, performance trailers, and boats. We will finance your purchase in-house regardless of your credit history. You can actually make your purchase from home or on the go. Simply go online to johngibsonautosales.com and take a virtual tour of our inventory. We call it shopping made easy. See you soon at John Gibson Auto Sales in person or online. Hi, I'm Katie Pazdera, Executive Director for Fox Ridge Assisted Living Chanel. Fox Ridge has served the Central Arkansas community for over 13 years with our three convenient locations in Bryant, Chanel, and North Little Rock. When the COVID-19 pandemic began, we immediately implemented best practices based on our most current CDC and Department of Health guidelines to protect our residents and staff. Fox Ridge implemented visitor restrictions in order to diminish the risk of the spread and protect our current Fox Ridge family and our prospective residents as well. We understand the importance of social for our residents. They are entertained in a variety of creative ways that maintain their safety, including virtual visits with family members. Fox Ridge takes pride in providing the safest and most comfortable living experience in Central Arkansas. We continue to maintain our standards to provide the best care for your loved ones. Visit us online or call to schedule your virtual tour today. There are now more options than ever to enjoy tzatzikis. Our Mediterranean menu is full of healthy and original favorites that are available for dine-in, delivery, takeout, curbside, and drive-through at select locations. We've implemented safety procedures to protect both our guests and our crews. Order online at tzatzikis.com or download our app today. Thank you for your continued support. Hi folks, Mark Sherwood with Sherwood Tractor. Dad always told us boys growing up on the farm to use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. And that's pretty much what we did. But with Mahindra Tractors and Influence, you don't have to make it do or do without what's in your barn. 
KARK4 is celebrating pet adoptions this month, and we've joined up with the Jacksonville Animal Shelter. It's time to find your next pet, and it's free all month long. KARK4's Clear the Shelters, sponsored by First Arkansas Bank and Trust. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. And welcome back into Capital View. Van Buren County is one of 34 dry counties across the state. But that all could change in a few months. The county clerk announcing that the wet dry issue will appear on the ballot this November. Our Hunter Hoagland reports on the mixed opinions on this issue. Some in Van Buren County may be more than just thirsty for an ice cold. Thirsty for revenue. Meet David Byard, the man who started Let Van Buren County Vote. We no longer have to go door to door. The group's goal make the county wet. Right now, the neighboring counties get all of the sales tax off of all the alcohol sales. We want to keep our own sales tax here in our county for us to use. Byard says in addition to the economic benefits something like this could bring to the county, it's also a matter of safety. Right now, if you wanted to buy a six-pack of beer, you have to drive 40 miles, you know, and a lot of people will make that drive. And let's face it, they don't wait 40 miles before they start drinking. But still others say though it's made its way on the ballot, their hope is that it stays off the shelves. I don't like the idea of it being a wet county. Jill Davis says if safety is the problem at hand, then liquor should be taken out of the equation altogether. I like being in a place where I feel like my children are safe and they're not going to be out on the road and a drink driver come and hit them. So while the two disagree on the wet dry issue, they both agree on the importance of November 3rd. I think it's very important for people to make their voice heard. If you want the county to go wet, you vote yes. If you want the county to stay dry, you'll vote no. Something interesting to point out here, Byard, the man you actually heard from there who petitioned for all the signatures, says he doesn't drink, nor does he want his kids drinking. He says he just hates seeing other counties get money that could be going back into Van Buren County. President Trump continues to criticize mail-in voting, speaking with Arizona Governor Doug Ducey and White House Coronavirus Task Force Coordinator Dr. Deborah Birx at the White House this week. The president said mail-in voting in the state of Nevada would be, quote, a catastrophe. However, Mr. Trump applauded Arizona and Florida for its mail-in voting system, calling them refined. Look at the vote that took place on a simple congressional district in an area that should be able to do it very easily. In Manhattan, it's a total, it's a total, uh, what's happened, it's a nightmare. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. Look at Patterson, New Jersey, and look at other locations. We can't have that. You'll never know who the winner is, but the winner's going to be me. Joe Biden will not travel to Milwaukee to accept the Democratic, or the Democratic presidential nomination later this month. The party announced on Wednesday that the convention will be entirely virtual and that no speakers will appear in Milwaukee. Democrats cite a desire to prevent risking the health of our host community in making that decision. Biden will now accept the nomination virtually from his home state of Delaware. The vice presidential nominee will address the convention remotely as well. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi reacted shortly after that announcement. But I think it's an indication of the seriousness with which she uh, judges the, uh, the situation. This the pandemic is, is dangerous, and the increase in numbers uh, just demands uh, that we keep our distances. I commend him for doing that. The convention is scheduled to run from August 17th through August 20th. Cori Bush beat a 10-term incumbent Democrat congresswoman in Missouri on Tuesday. Bush was backed by progressive organizations and Senator Bernie Sanders against Representative Lacey Clay, who was endorsed by Speaker Nancy Pelosi and other establishment figures. Bush was once homeless before earning a nursing degree and becoming a leader in protest organization in Ferguson, Missouri. You talk about low wage, I've been low wage. You talk about being unhoused, I've been unhoused. I've been uninsured. So I can speak to those things differently. She'll face Republican Anthony Rogers and Libertarian Alex Furman in the November election. Rogers won the Republican primary with a 62% of that vote. Two Georgia congressmen want to erect a statue of the late congressman and civil rights icon John Lewis to represent Georgia in the U.S. Capitol Statuary Hall. Washington correspondent Kelly Meyer reports on those efforts. Just a week after leaving Capitol Hill for the last time, John Lewis's Georgia colleagues are working on a way to preserve his memory in the halls of Congress. We think that there's no better person that we could have uh, to represent our state and 
Capitals and uh, our friend John Lewis. Democrat Congressman Sanford Bishop and Republican Congressman Tom Graves are two of the ten Georgia lawmakers proposing to replace the statue of Confederate leader Alexander Hamilton Stevens with one of Congressman John Lewis. We just ask that they consider this. Uh, this tribute to uh, Congressman Lewis. But approval for the change must come from the Georgia State Capitol. In a tweet last week, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp signaled his support for the move, saying, By putting his statue in the U.S. Capitol, we can celebrate his legacy of service for years to come. President Trump hasn't weighed in on the matter, but has long been against removing Confederate statues. Graves says their push isn't an attempt to changing history. Instead of cancel culture, it's okay to like you know highlight the the, the modern uh, legacies of, of those that have positive impact. Bishop and Graves are encouraged. Members of both parties are getting on board. And that we can uh, walk past uh, a statue in the not in the not too distant future of of our friend, our colleague, our hero, John Lewis, uh, in Statuary Hall. Reporting in Washington, I'm Kelly Meyer. And we're back to wrap it up after this. You're watching Capitol View on Sunday morning. Happy presents a spicy western. Western with kick. The new spicy western bacon cheeseburger at Hardee's. Feed your happy. Everyone has trouble hooking up a trailer. But not anymore. The TJ Trailer Guide. Get it now at tjtrailerguide.com. We're building the biggest news operation in the country. 5,500 journalists across the U.S. to deliver you news, not talk. Facts, not opinions. News Nation, coming September 1st to WGN America. Your news, your nation. Wake up to an omelet with jalapenos. melty cheese, crispy bacon, and jalapenos. on a made-from-scratch biscuit or soft tortilla. Spice up your breakfast. The Southwest Omelet Biscuit and Burrito are back at Hardee's. Feed your happy. You're watching Capital View. Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. And that is it for today's show. We're back with an all-new Capital View next week. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.